Hi everyone, this is Veronica. Today our topic of discussion is bushfires in Australia. So every year we see this kind of fires breaking out in Australia. So we'll discuss in detail what are they exactly and how they are different this year. For my video updates and queries, you can connect with me on Instagram and Facebook because I feel together we can make a difference. So now let me tell you here about the Study IQ Premium content. You can become a member of our channel at rupees one fifty nine per month only. So here you'll get exclusive content which won't be available to other subscribers who are not the members. Uh, for example, by videos by Dr. Gaurav Garg, daily current affairs, monthly banking awareness, monthly best two hundred current affairs. By Prashant Dhawan, you'll get monthly compilation of most important geopolitics and IR issues. By Dr. Mahipal Singh Rathore, you'll get monthly five premium videos. So we have also launched uh, Madhya Pradesh PSC Prelims 2019-20 test series. Here you will find ten tests plus one demo test. For detailed information, you can log on on to www.testiq.com, and the uh, course, the value of the course is rupees fifteen hundred only. So today's context. Australia is witnessing widespread bushfires and the country has declared a state of emergency for the state of NSW that is New South Wales so here you can see the map of Australia this is the western australia northern territory south australia queensland new south so we are talking about this particular area new south wales victoria is also there then tasmania so this is a map of all all the this australian territory so here the bush fires are actually spreading very fast along with the catastro uh, catastrophic fire warning by the government also now talking about this warning what does this warning means that means when catastrophic fire warnings are put in place residents are supposed to leave bush fire prone areas immediately across new south wales over 600 schools were shut down and the recent bush fires have probably notably left at least 3 to 5 people dead so talking about are these bush fires new to australia see bush fires are a routine occurrence in the country the australian climate is so hot and dry and it is very prone to the droughts so at any time of the year some parts of australia are prone to bush fires such fires happen when grass branches and the trees they start burning in an uncontrolled manner for for this area the new south wales and queensland especially the peak risks for bushfires is during spring and early summer so this time is around november and december but you know this year there is something different distinct about the present bushfire season because the above pattern of the bushfires this year seems to be breaking down because above pattern means that it uh, these bushfires spread during your spring and early summer which is around november december but this year bushfires are happening outside the regular places and times also this bushfire season is believed to be worst and had started even before the beginning of southern hemisphere summers furthermore these bushfires are also affecting the quality air quality index okay that is the quality of air in the area surrounding them and if we look at the readings of particulate matter 2.5 the readings are 223 then particulate matter 10 readings are 399 which are falling in hazardous category that means readings above 200 we all are aware these uh, these days about air quality index because of the delhi pollution you have seen that has even crossed 600 to 700 of these points so on a particular day uh, about these bush fires in australia 75 fires were ablaze out of these 9 were considered at the emergency level and 37 were not contained the day saw over 300 new bush fire as well so the question is finally what causes bush fires so these bush fires which are generally very slow moving if you look at their characteristics they do not spread very fast they are very slow moving they have a higher heat output and can smolder for days so these bush fires are thus considered to be an intrinsic part of australia's environment 
its natural ecosystem has been shaped by and has evolved with historic and recent fires and it is very difficult to tame and control naturally occurring bushfires but their consequences can be minimized if certain measures are taken so there are other factors that create a favorable environment for bushfires these include the factors as fuel load fuel load what does it include leaf litter barks small branches fuel moisture then the speeds of the wind high temperature oxygen to ignite low humidity and the ignition source obviously that it is present there and they can be caused by both human activity and lightning lightning is responsible for about half of ignitions ignitions in australia but the remaining fires have human origins so you can say humans are also responsible because we have seen human origins of such fires the remaining fires because these uh, do, the reason of human origin are deliberate they are not accidental but sometimes obviously accidental fires also break out in fact police in australia are investigating if the fire in sydney's upper north shore was deliberately lit by suspected arsonists so the word is arsonists so arsonist means who commit the criminal act of deliberately setting fire to the property now is there a climate change link to this so we try to find out that also because there are speculations about the links between climate change and the bushfires while bushfires are not directly so we should know here that bushfires are not directly triggered by climate change but there is definitely an indirect role of climate change as climate change is increasing the risk of more frequent and intense bushfires and even this time fires are burning in places and at intensities never experienced before for example rainforest okay here i'll give you example rain forests in north nsw okay then tropical queensland tropical so initially in earlier times in earlier years if you see these fires were not so intense here and the formerly even wet old growth forest in tasmania but this year we are seeing the breaking of fires very intense fires in these areas and the drought being faced is more intense than the millennium drought with higher levels of evaporation due to the higher temperatures so this has actually dried out the bush and made it easier for fires to start easier for them to spread very very quickly now there are certain categories because of the bush fires because the word even bush fire builds on the concept of the bush because it spreads through these bushes so one category is your hilly mountainous fires because they burn in hilly mountainous or alpine areas which are usually densely forested because this land is less accessible and not conducive to agriculture thus many of these densely forested areas have been saved from deforestation and are protected by national state and other parks now the steep terrain increases the speed and intensity of the fire storm because there is no agriculture there are dense forest so where settlements are located in these hilly areas or mountainous areas bush fires can actually pose a threat to both life and property another category is flat grassland fires so they burn along flat plains or areas of small undulation predominantly covered in grasses or the scrubland so these fires can move very quickly which are fanned by the high wind speeds of the winds in the flat topography and they quickly consume the small amounts of fuel vegetation available so these fires pose less of a threat to settlements as they rarely reach the same intensity seen in major fire storm as the land is flat the fires are easier to map and predict and the terrain is more accessible for fire fighting personnel because many regions of these pre predominantly flat terrain in australia have been almost completely deforested for agriculture so it reduces the fuel loads which would otherwise facilitate fires in these areas so we have talked about the categories again but here i'll again tell you there are some other reasons what are the major reasons for breaking out of such fires for example smoking so smoking isn't a, as common as source of bushfire ignition as we might think but there have been uh, there have to be some really specific conditions for a flicked cigarette to spark a fire for example temperatures generally need to be above 27 degrees celsius and humidity below 22% then burning some people what they do burning of debris is a regular source of bushfire ignition 
then as i already told you ars arson the motivations of for why people commit arson are varied and complex but arson is behind large number of bushfires both in australia and internationally where people deliber deliberately do this so this is kind of a crime then railway has its own cause own category as trains are surprisingly common source of bushfires sometimes brake failures in trains can throw out a wall of sparks sometimes ign igniting dry vegetation along the side of tracks and across significant distances then another reason is campfire also now in campfires like embers from campfires and campfires that aren't properly extinguished are a bushfire hazard equipment use then children are also categorized separately as they are often implicated in starting fires but usually they are considered to be out of curiosity then as i told you lightning is one of the reason then there are miscellaneous reasons like power lines firearms blasting glass refraction if army exercises turn out to be culprit so like that so you see there is a danger obviously there is a reason because even the topography and ge uh, geography of australia is like that that it's very easy for these fires to spread along the dry climate so this is all about today but definitely uh, this country needs to take measure for the consequences how they can take care of the consequences because they are very bad after the fires fire fighting is very difficult in hilly areas but it's easy in the flat and grassland areas even if we cannot stop these fires what we should try is to minimize the effects to minimize the consequences right so this is all about today's lecture thank you